Now, some of you are telling uh, us a thousand. So, thousand in what unit? I mean, it can be correct if you have correct units. Like, so, what, Abdi, what's your unit for saying that the density of the water is instead of one, saying that it's a thousand? Like, thousand in what unit? Yeah, that's the basic SI unit of mass and volume. Kilogram, it's the weird one, it has kilo prefix, but it's like, that's actually the base, base unit. Kilogram per, the base unit of length is meter, so cubic meter would be the base unit of, um, that would be the base unit of volume. And does everyone here know how big a quantity a cubic meter is? Like how many, um, so everyone here has some idea of what liter is? So if we are comparing liters to uh, cubic meter, uh, we are comparing liters to cubic meter, which is bigger? Cubic meter is bigger by how much? So let's say one cubic meter is equal to some number of liters. Thousand liters? Everyone agrees that sounds about right? One thousand liters is one cubic meter. Uh, let me show you what one cubic meter looks like because I think this is uh, one of those quantities when you see it for the first time, you think that's, that's too large, that can't be right. But this is actually right. So let me help you visualize with my meter sticks. So. Let me get three meter sticks out. So it, it, this is to visualize a cubic meter. So this is one meter. If you are talking about square meter, we are talking about an area with one meter on a side and one meter on the other side. It's a pretty large area, right? It's about an area of this half of the desk. And if you are talking about cubic meter of volume, you have to imagine taking this area and stacking it up to be a meter high. Is this a fairly big volume? It's a pretty good sized aquarium. Like, I don't have room for anything like this in my room. <laughs> but, you know, if you have a good sized aquarium, aquarium, it might take about a cubic meter uh, for aquarium that's at home. So, and, um, like, you know, think back to how small a liter is. Big bottle of soda that you might get is two liter bottle. And you know, imagine feeding 500 of those in here. You can imagine that, right? Yeah. So, so um, this is what I want you to visualize. That one cubic meter, it is a pretty big volume. So it is actually 1,000 liters. And we can show this mathematically too. This is the unit conversion exercise where you do kind of have to be careful <laughs> to make sure you don't make mistakes. I think the main disconnect here comes down to not many people, at least the first time you see it, have good sense of how many cubic centimeters one cubic meter is. So let's say I'm talking about one cubic meter. How many cubic centimeters is that? 10 to the power of six, so give me a number in English. Did someone say a million? Yeah, one cubic meter is a million cubic centimeters. Sounds about right? Yeah, and you know, if this doesn't make immediate intuitive sense to you, this is how I would convert units. So I, I will do this up here too, but um, this is where you have to um, you have to be aware of scaling factors. So how a uh, length scales is different from how an area scales, and it's also different from how a volume scales. So for those of you where this number looks big. It's because you are thinking of, well, one meter, that's not a million centimeters. One meter is only 100 centimeters. That's what you are remembering, right? And when you want to turn this into volume, 
then what you are doing is you are cubing it. Take the cube of the left hand side. At the same time, take the cube of the right hand side. Then the left hand side becomes 1 cubed, well that's just 1, times meter cubed. That's a cubic meter. The right hand side becomes, well, 100 cubed. 10 to the power of 2 raised to another power of 3. That's 10 to the power of 6. 10 to the power of 6 centimeter cubed. And um, so it, it comes down to a matter of a scaling relationship. Everyone here familiar with the scaling relationship? Yes, as in, you know, imagine, so I'm just going to give you a fake number. Imagine I'm 140 pounds. I'm not, but that's my ideal weight. Um, if you saw someone like me, except twice as tall and just everything proportionally, how much do you think that person should weigh? If I'm 140 pounds and you saw someone else who's just like me, except it's double in every way, twice the height, twice the width, twice the, the depth, um, how much would that person weigh? 280 pounds? No. The, that person should weigh eight times what I weigh. So it would be eight times 140, so something like 1,120 uh, um, uh, pounds or something like that. So in fact, if you know very tall people, that's where, like if, if someone's like six foot five, um, even very skinny person who's six foot five will be like 200 pounds because uh, a uh, very small change in height, if we are doing things proportionally, that goes to the cube. So someone who is 10% taller than you are, their um, proportional weight should be about 30% larger. All of this sounds familiar? Well, if not, as you do engineering, you'll come across this at some point more, and you'll get familiar with it. For this class, this is what I want you to be familiar with. That idea that one cubic meter is a very large volume. So when your math gives you that one cubic meter is a million cubic centimeter, which means because of this, it's a million, a million milliliter, which means it's a thousand liter. That's actually correct answer. It sounds like a lot of volume, and it's because it is a lot of volume. OK, so let me just do this quick unit conversion here that gets you this thousand kilogram per cubic meter. This is, a, um, I assume you have seen a lot of this in a chemistry class, but in case you, know, you haven't or you forgot, I'm not supposed to assume you took chemistry for this class anyway. So let me just show this one unit conversion. We don't do a lot of unit conversion in this class, but um, density is, I think, one example where you shouldn't know how to convert unit. Because it's just so much simpler to remember that uh, density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. But for any calculation you do, you do want to convert it to basic SI unit. So I want to convert this eventually to kilogram per meter cubed. And the technique you learn in chemistry, hopefully, is you multiply by one. In each step of unit conversion, you are multiplying by a ratio that works out to be one. It's just that it's a convenient combination of units. So you cancel out the unit you don't want, and you gain the unit that you do want. So I'm going to multiply by a ratio that will have unit of kilogram per gram. So if I want this ratio to be one, the quantity on the numerator should be the same quantity as quantity on the denominator. So you know, think through it for a while, and you should get one kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So this ratio is 1. Everyone agrees? Yes? So multiplying by this shouldn't change anything, um, except for the fact that I'm going to get rid of grams and gain the kilograms that I wanted. So that's one step. Now, if you're just looking at this, you might say, oh, so density of water should be, you know, 1,000th <laughs> of kilogram, whatever, in the basic SI unit. Uh, there's the second step. I need to convert the unit of uh, cubic centimeters to cubic meters. Um, here, the way I like to do it is actually this. So, you know, if you remember this, that this is a million cubic centimeters, great. But suppose you didn't remember it, 
then the way I would do it is I would say, all right, um, so multiply by, so I want to cancel out centimeter and gain meter. So the ratio I'll be using is 100 centimeter per meter. But single factor of this is not enough because I have three factors of centimeter. So I need to raise this to power of three. And when you do that, you remember to raise 100 to power of three as well. So when you work out the numbers, it's a million divided by a thousand. That's how you end up with the basic SI version of thousand kilogram per cubic meter. Okay. So that's the long bit about density. Um, that's the density of water. And oftentimes what we do is if we, you want to describe density of any object, the convenient intuitive thing to do is com compare to density of water because that's sort of the familiar quantity. Like if you want to know density of a person, a person's density is about uh, the same as water. That's why you just about barely float. Uh, so you know my density, including bones um, and everything in me, um, is about 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter, maybe slightly less, because I do float. Um, if you are looking at density of something like a steel, I think I forget, it's like five times or some number integer, not integer, some number times density of water. That's why when I drop it, it sinks in the water, it doesn't float. 